Κυρίε και κύριοι, καλησπέρα σα. Για μια ακόμα φορά, η εκπομπή Ομογένεια των Λονδίνων θα σα παρουσιάσει όλε τι εκδηλώσει που πραγματοποιήθηκαν στην ελληνική κοινότητα τη Μεγάλη Βρετανία και όχι μόνο. Η εκπομπή μα ενημερώνει την Ομογένεια για τα τελευταία 16 χρόνια ανελειπώ. Γι' αυτό συντονιστείτε μαζί μα για να ενημερώνεστε για την επικαιρότητα και όλα τα γεγονότα που διαδραματίζονται εδώ. Α δούμε πρώτα του τρόπου που μπορείτε να μα παρακολουθείτε. Παρακολουθήστε την εκπομπή Ομογένεια εδώ Λονδίνο αλλά και όλες τις παραγωγές του Hellenic TV ελεύθερα σε ολόκληρη την Αγγλία από το Freeview στο κανάλι 264. Απλά επιλέξτε την κατηγορία International από το Vision TV. Με το Rockbox μπορείτε να παρακολουθείτε όλα τα τηλεοπτικά και ραδιοφωνικά κανάλια από Ελλάδα και Κύπρο. Το Rockbox μπορείτε να το προμηθευτείτε από τα γραφεία της CETA UK και να έχετε απεριόριστη τεχνική υποστήριξη. Για περισσότερες πληροφορίες επικοινωνήστε με το Hellenic TV στο τηλέφωνο 020 8292 7037 ή με την CETA UK στο τηλέφωνο 0800 036 0078. Με το application Vision TV Net μπορείτε να παρακολουθείτε όλα τα προγράμματά μας ζωντανά στο κινητό, στο tablet ή στον υπολογιστή σας. Για περισσότερες πληροφορίες σχετικά με τα προγράμματα του Hellenic TV και τους τρόπους που μπορείτε να μας παρακολουθείτε, επισκεφτείτε την ιστοσελίδα μας www.hellenictv.net. Καλούμε όλου εσά να μα ενημερώνετε για τι εκδηλώσει που πραγματοποιούνται στην κοινότητά μα. Επικοινωνήστε μαζί μα και εμεί θα βιντεοσκοπήσουμε το γεγονό και θα το προβάλλουμε στο Hellenic TV. Οι τρόποι που μπορείτε να επικοινωνείτε μαζί μα είναι μέσω τηλεφώνου στο 020-8292-7037 ή μέσω τη ηλεκτρονική μα διεύθυνση info.pakihellenictv.net. Στο απόψινό μας πρόγραμμα που είναι και το τελευταίο για την περίοδο 2017-18 θα παρουσιάσουμε την εκδήλωση που διοργάνωσε η Εθνική Κυπριακή Ομοσπονδία στο House of Commons για να ενημερώσει τους Βρετανούς βουλευτές για το εθνικό θέμα της Κύπρου. Επίσης θα παρουσιάσουμε το μεγάλο ελληνικό φέστιβαλ που διοργάνωσε η κοινότητα του Αγίου Δημητρίου στο Βόρειο Λονδίνο. Και τέλος, την καλοκαιρινή γιορτή του Ελληνικού Παρακιακού Σχολείου της Κοινότητας του Αγίου Νικολάου. Ας ξεκινήσουμε το πρώτο μας θέμα που αφορά το καθιερωμένο λόμπι που οργάνωσε στο Grand Committee Room της Βρετανικής Βουλής η Εθνική Κυπριακή Ομοσπονδία στις 10 Ιουλίου. Την Κυπριακή Κυβέρνηση εκπροσώπησε ο κυβερνητικός εκπρόσωπος Πρόδρομος Προδρόμου. Ακόμη παρευρέθηκαν πολλοί φιλοκύπροι Βρετανοί βουλευτές από όλα τα κόμματα. Λόρδοι, εκπρόσωποι των παρικιακών παραρτημάτων των κομμάτων, εκπρόσωποι σωματείων και απλοί πατριώτες οι οποίοι κατέκλυσαν το Grand Committee Room. Ο πρόεδρος της Εθνικής Κυπριακής Ομοσπονδίας, Χρήστος Καραολής, αφού καλωσόρισε όλους στην εκδήλωση, μίλησε για την ελπίδα και την αποφασιστικότητα της ελληνικής κυπριακής κοινότητας να δει μια ειρηνική και ενωμένη Κύπρο. Ελεύθερη από το ξεπερασμένο σύστημα εγγυήσεων και πεβατικών δικαιωμάτων και χωρίς την παρουσία ξένων στρατευμάτων. Αμέσως μετά τον κύριο Καραολή, το λόγο έλαβε ο συντονιστής της εκδήλωσης Sir Roger James Gale, ο οποίος και αυτός με τη σειρά του καλωσόρισε όλους τους βουλευτές και όλο τον κόσμο που συμμετείχαν στην εκδήλωση και τόνισε ότι όλοι πρέπει να προσβλέπουμε στην ημέρα που όλοι οι Κύπροι θα έχουν πρόσβαση σε ολόκληρο το νησί τους. Ας παρακολουθήσουμε τον κύριο Καραολή και τον κύριο Roger James Gale στο βίντεο που ακολουθεί. Honourable and right honourable members of parliament, Mr. Government spokesman, uh, I think the ambassador is on his way uh, in Priviadis, but I will welcome in, in his absence, dear friends and colleagues. Welcome to uh, this evening's annual Cyprus meeting and reception. It is a pleasure to see so many parliamentarians and uh, friends of Cyprus here with us this evening. Firstly, I'd like to congratulate Sir Roger uh, on his recent re election as chairman of the APPG. And all the other vice presidents, treasurer, secretary, and other officers of the APPG. Despite the best efforts and concessions of President Anastasiadis in Crans Montana, more than a year ago, the negotiations did not result in the much sought after solution for the benefit of all Cypriots. However, the recent appointment of Jane Hull Luck to conduct consultations has raised hopes 
the negotiations will once again resume. On the 44th anniversary of the illegal Turkish invasion and continuing occupation, the issue remains unresolved. And we, as UK Cypriots, are gathered here in our parliament pledging our unwavering commitment to ensure that our island is finally reunited. What we're asking for is both fair and simple. A just solution based on the relevant UN <coughs> Security Council resolutions and high-level agreements, a fully functioning state that is in line with the rule of law and free from foreign interference. Put simply, a normal state, as the UN Secretary General said, and a position that I'm very grateful to our friends in Parliament for supporting. We live in challenging times. Through a period of regional civil unrest and instability, Cyprus has remained a beacon of stability, hope and prosperity in the Middle East. Cyprus has signed energy agreements with international conglomerates for the exploration and exploitation of hydrocarbons, weathered the global financial crisis, and continues to attract business and investment. Unfortunately, though, Turkey continues to meddle in Cyprus's affairs. Earlier this year, Turkish warships were illegally deployed into Cyprus's EEZ to prevent the Italian energy company ENI from conducting exploration work. Our community was quick to respond, and within two weeks, 3,000 emails was sent to the Foreign Office calling on the government to take a stand against Turkey's illegal actions. And on behalf of all of us, I'd like to thank Sir Alan Duncan, the Minister for Europe, for confirming the UK government's support for exploration to go ahead. I'd also like to thank <coughs> Fabian on behalf of the Labour Party, uh, Sir Roger on behalf of the APPG, and all the other individual parliamentarians, many of whom are here tonight, for issuing statements condemning Turkey's actions in the EEZ. President Erdogan has now succeeded in strengthening his powers in Turkey. And whilst it's no secret that President Erdogan might have secured 50% of the vote, the other 50% demand more freedom, more democracy, and more respect for human rights. Nevertheless, it is our hope that following his re-election, President Erdogan will demonstrate greater flexibility on the key issues of security, guarantees, and troops. At this point in time, the Prime Minister, Government, and indeed our parliamentary friends have a unique opportunity to leverage the strategic and evolving relationship that our country has with Turkey to press for the abolition of the anachronistic system of guarantees with unilateral intervention rights and the removal of Turkish troops and all other troops from the Republic of Cyprus. As it became evident from the negotiations in Kranz, Montana, despite President Anastasiadis' comprehensive proposals on the areas of territory, governance, property, and his acceptance of the Gutierrez framework, the Turkish government reiterated that it was not willing to make sufficient concessions on the crucial issue of security and guarantees. Our UK Cypriot community is clear that Turkey's unacceptable demands on these issues and its influence in Cyprus must come to an end. As members of parliament in one of the most powerful and influential nations in the world, your position enables you to make a real and lasting change to the lives not only of your constituents and the 300,000 UK Cypriots, but also an entire population that is asking for peace, justice, and the restoration of human rights. In the face of an increasingly intransigent Turkey, now is the time for all Cypriots, whether they're Greek Cypriot, Turkish Cypriot, Maronite, Latin, or Armenian, to ensure that our demands for a truly independent and sovereign Republic of Cyprus are heard loud and clear. Thank you very much. Sir Roger Gale, Chair of the APPG. Thank you very much indeed. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us um, when there are other distractions outside, I gather. Um, before I say what I want to say, I want to pay tribute to uh, somebody who, as a young man in 1974, spent a considerable amount of time at some personal risk documenting in photographs the aftermath of the invasion. Um, I'm referring to him. Um, Doros Partisidis. Um, I'm going to take a huge risk. There are very few copies of this book. I happen to be privileged to be the owner of one of them because Doris gave it to me. But I'm conscious of the fact that it's something that ought to be shared and I don't suppose there are many people in this room who've ever seen it. Photographs in it are quite astonishing. So what I'm going to do now is I take the risk and pass it round. Um, 
please don't spend all evening looking at it because there are a lot of people who probably want to have a look at it. We'll start with you, Chris Austin, you can pedal it round. But I do want it back. <laughs> I think Doris said there are only about six copies of it in the world. And I'm very privileged and very honoured to be the owner of one of them. Um, during the past year, we have had a significant number of meetings. We've had tremendous support, I should say, first of all, from your High Commissioner in London. Um, he is a good friend. He's given tremendous support to the all-party group. He's a tremendous ambassador for your cause. And um, without his assistance, such that we have been able to achieve, we could not have achieved. I'd also like to join Christos in playing, paying tribute to Sir Alan Duncan, the Minister of State at the Foreign and Commonwealth Office here in London, who again has been immensely supportive. Um, I think it is probably fair to say that Sir Alan devotes a disproportionate amount of time um, to the Cyprus issue when you consider that he has as far as I can see, most of the rest of the world in his ministerial brief. Uh, it is a quite extraordinary tour de force, and again, we're very grateful to Alan. And, and of course, I am grateful for the support of my parliamentary <coughs> colleagues right across the House. Uh, we have never, in the getting on for 35 years now that I've been involved in the Cyprus issue on your behalf, there was a time when I had hair and less weight as well. Um, I've, it has never been a party political issue so far as we are concerned. And as long as I am the chairman of the all-party group, it will not be. I think it is absolutely vital that we don't play party politics with your country, that we take a collegiate and non-partisan approach. And if we pull together, then of course we can achieve a great deal more uh, than if we pull apart. Um, something that one or two other people in high places might want to take on board. Um, we have visited the island. I'm, I'm ashamed to say that as a proud citizen of Morfu, I have not been able to visit the island and attend Morfu rally for the last three years. And the reason for that is because the rally, the march towards Morfu, uh, the reflaying ceremony and the rest of the events that take place over that weekend happen to clash now with the plenary session of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe. And uh, for my sins, I lead the British delegation to that Parliamentary Assembly. But of course, that in itself is also a plus because it means that I am able to make significant contact with our Cypriot friends and on your behalf with others within the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe. And I'd like to pay tribute uh, to Stella Kyriakides, who for the last three months of last year was the President of the Parliamentary Assembly. She took over following the suspension of Pedro Agramont, and she did a sterling job. And it's a huge sadness, actually, that uh, she was, because of the nature of the term of office, only allowed to serve three months. In that three months, she did a brilliant job. And uh, you, those of you who are members of the Cypriot community, can be very proud of the work that Stella did, again, on your behalf. Um, looking forward, which we must, it is 44 years, very soon, since the invasion. I remember it very well indeed, because I was a young journalist working in the offices of BBC Radio London at the time, and I watched with horror the reports of the invasion. And I've effectively lived with that ever since. Um, I regard myself as having failed in my own task because I promised the late, great George Yarolema that I would get his house back for him. Well, it hasn't happened yet, but that won't stop us from going on trying. Um, there are many of you who are dispossessed, many of you who want to be able to go back freely uh, to meet family, to meet friends, to meet Turkish Cypriot friends, actually, as well. But most importantly, to have free access to the entirety of your island. And I and my parliamentary colleagues will continue to work for that. 
Um, that's all I want to say to you. I'd now like to introduce the government spokesman, uh, Mr. Padromas, who will say a few words. And after that, uh, we shall hear, I think, from uh, from the um, from our own minister, Lord Ahmad. So, without further ado, you have the floor. Επόμενος ομιλητής ήταν ο κυβερνητικός εκπρόσωπος της Κύπρου, ο κύριος Πρόδομος Προδρόμου, ο οποίος παρευρέθηκε στο Λονδίνο ειδικά για αυτήν την εκδήλωση. Μεταξύ άλλων, ο κύριος Προδρόμου τόνισε ότι ο πρόεδρος της Κυπριακής Δημοκρατίας, Νίκος Αναστασιάδης, είναι έτοιμος να επιστρέψει σε διαπραγματεύσεις για την επανένωση της Κύπρου. Αλλά οι προετοιμασίες για τις συνομιλίες πρέπει να είναι διεξοδικές για να δούμε ένα επιτυχημένο αποτέλεσμα. Ας παρακολουθήσουμε την ομιλία του κύριου Προδρόμου. Ladies and gentlemen, dear compatriots, if I'm allowed to say, British compatriots, British Cypriot compatriots, I'm very glad and honored being here today and I want to thank uh, the Association of Cypriots as well as the all-party parliamentary group for Cyprus. First of all, I I have to admit that we are here in the middle of serious developments concerning the United Kingdom, developments concerning Brexit. I, I will just make two short remarks on this question, hoping that there is still some room uh, to think about Cyprus. Uh, first of all, we hope we are interested in Cyprus because uh, we consider that uh, even with the decision of the British citizens to leave the European Union, the United Kingdom is and shall remain an important partner for, Euro, of the, for the Europe and the European Union. So uh, it is our interest to have a proper agreement between the United Kingdom and uh, the European Union and to avoid uh, the no-deal scenario. At the same time, we need to have a deal concerning the special interest of the Republic of Cyprus, because uh, it is well known that we have British areas in Cyprus and we want to find an, a way to protect the rights, to keep the same rights to people living or working inside the British areas. I believe it is possible because the negotiations are going well. We do have developments also, an important development for Cyprus. The appointment by the Secretary General of the United Nations of uh, the diplomat, uh, Mrs. Uh, Jane Hall Lut as his special envoy in order to have uh, in-depth consultations with all parties in order to find out whether there is room and how will be conducted a new initiative, negotiations about the Cyprus issue. From the first moment, one year ago, when there was unfor the unfortunate deadlock in Crown Montana in the conference on Cyprus, UN Conference of Cyprus, President Anastasiadis was clear. We asked to restart the negotiations from, the, from where we, we left it and uh, to consider as uh, given the framework proposed by the Secretary General. Why? Because it was an important development in the history of the negotiations. Unfortunately, there is a history of 44 years from the moment that, Cy that Turkey invaded Cyprus. But it was uh, a very important development that, for the first time, we went to the hard core of the Cyprus issue, the question of security. And Mr. Guterres, proposed six parameters, and uh, especially amongst them, all are important, but for us it was very important that the United Nations were proposing to give 
a new system of security because the obsolete system of the 1960s, the system that was used by Turkey to invade Cyprus as a pretext, could not accompany a new agree an agreement for a federal republic of Cyprus. At the same time, we want to be sure that we will have an agreement with the withdrawal of the Turkish troops from with the solution. Because we believe that Greek Cypriots and Turkish Cypriots, we can find our way, our way with a compromise in a federal Cyprus organized according to the international law, the decisions and the resolutions of the United Nations and the rules of the European Union, because Cyprus will always be a member of the European Union, and as such can propose a very good deal about the security of all the Cypriots, whether Turkish Cypriots or Greek Cypriots, without uh, having the control of a third country like Turkey. I will limit my remarks uh, being at your disposal uh, to discuss uh, further uh, later in order to give the opportunity to have uh, the other friends here to have their, their interventions. I just want to, to say again uh, thank you for your presence and uh, for the invitation and to talking on behalf of the President of the Republic to assure you that he will do his best in this new opportunity. We are ready to negotiate and we hope that the other side and especially Turkey, more than the Turkish Cypriots, uh, will be ready to deliver this time and not to have uh, the same attitude as in Grand Montana when Turkey was asking uh, about the continuation of the guarantees and the military base in Cyprus. Thank you. Ακολούθησαν και άλλες πολλές ομιλίες από βουλευτές και λόρδους που συμμετείχαν στη συζήτηση. Εκ μέρους της κυβέρνησης του Ηνωμένου Βασιλείου μίλησε ο Υπουργός Εξωτερικών Λόρδος Αχμέτου Ήμπλιτον, ο οποίος εξέφρασε εγνωμοσύνη προς την Εθνική Κυπριακή Ομοσπονδία και την Κυπριακή Υπατή Αρμοστία για τη συμβολή του στην ενίσχυση των δεσμών μεταξύ των δύο χωρών. Ο Υπουργό τόνισε ότι τελικό στόχο είναι επιτευχθεί λύση σύμφωνα με τι συμφωνίε υψηλού επίπεδου. Α παρακολουθήσουμε ένα απόσπασμα από την ομιλία του Λόρδου Αχμέτου Ήμπλιντον. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, Sir Roger, and, and to you, Christos, as well, for inviting me here this evening. Um, as Sir Roger said, there are a few things which are keeping us busy at the moment. I, I must admit, um, as a Foreign Office Minister, that's probably true of any day. But uh, the challenges of a brief as extensive as many of us carry, as Sir Roger said, in Sir Alan's case, or indeed with myself where I cover, I'm greatly honored to be the Minister of State for the Commonwealth, the United Nations, human rights, security, and, and the list carries on. But in doing so, it underlines the importance on both thematic priorities that Her Majesty's Government attaches to our relationships across the world, and also the importance of organizations on a multilateral basis, both through the United Nations and the Commonwealth. Therefore, I was delighted um, due to the fact that Sir Alan is currently hosting, indeed, I've just returned from the West Balkan Summit. Some of you may well know that's currently being hosted. And um, his role was very significant because um, as I left the meeting, he was accompanying the Prince of Wales in various important introductions. But I know he will want me to send his best wishes. And as you know, we have a new Foreign Secretary. Uh, and on his behalf as well, I extend best wishes to both the APPG and all of you present here today. I'm particularly grateful to the National Federation of Cypriots and the APPG for all you do in strengthening the bilateral relations between the United Kingdom and Cyprus, as well as many personal friendships and family connections that bind our countries. We also enjoy a wealth of cultural, economic, and institutional ties, which have grown even stronger, I would argue, most passionately in recent years. 
As we leave the European Union, let me assure you the United Kingdom government is absolutely determined to strengthen these bonds even further. They're not bound by our membership of the European Union. They go far deeper, building on shared values and the strengths of common legal systems. And as the Minister of State for the Commonwealth, the importance that we share on the grow growing role and strength of the Commonwealth and its membership. Let me assure you, we will continue to be natural partners in the field of defence and security, and I will come on to that in a moment. And we have demonstrated with the renewal of our bilateral defence cooperation programme in Cyprus last month. I was delighted that our two respective defence ministers were able to join together for that particular event. And on that particular issue, this year's programme includes collaboration on crisis response, search and rescue, and professional education and training. And I'm sure there is much scope to broaden our collaboration in the years ahead. Now, those who know me and those who were involved with the Commonwealth Summit, and thank you also, I know, Christos, for taking part during the summit itself, I have a great passion for the depth of what binds the 53 nations of the Commonwealth together. Common legal systems, common ties of culture, common values that we share. And that came to the fore very much as we were delighted and honoured to host the Commonwealth Summit in April this year. I was delighted that from Cyprus, both the President and indeed the Foreign Minister, who I had occasion to meet on several occasions during the summit, were able not just to attend but also had valuable bilateral talks with uh, both the Prime Minister, Mrs May, and my colleague, Sir Alan Duncan, as Minister for Europe. Christoph, as I said, I'm very grateful for you for taking part in the summit, in particular, the importance of the diaspora communities. The British Cy Cypriot community is extremely vital. It's the vibrance of what defines our bilateral relationship. We had a productive week in the summit, we had nice weather, that's always good. We seem to throw on pretty decent weather nowadays whenever we host international summits. And as Lord Ahmed of Wimbledon, it's pleasing that so far, touch wood, I'm sure this is genuine wood, we haven't had the fortnight of Wimbledon tennis disturbed either. But the importance was the discussions that took place. We had a productive week, yes, but the importance of that work is underlined about the nature of what is taken forward in terms of the outcomes of the Commonwealth Summit. And as Chair in Office, the United Kingdom will be looking to build our discussions and Cyprus's work in the same role towards their fairer, more secure, more prosperous and sustainable future for all citizens of the Commonwealth. I would also like to add my words of tribute and recognition to my good friend, the High Commissioner. I can't see him. Is he? He's not here at the moment. I think he's on his way. He's in his way. I'm sure when the he High Commissioner, knowing the High Commissioner, when he enters, we will all know. Um, <laughs> I can assure you, he was someone with whom I share many common thoughts, and I was absolutely delighted um, that we saw him actually being elected uh, to the Board of Governors as its chair in what we will see as a very important period for the Commonwealth as a whole. So Roger mentioned uh, about the Cypriot and the Cyprus settlement. Our view remains that a just, democratic and la lasting settlement in Cyprus based on the internationally accepted model of a bizonal, bicommunal federation remains the absolute objective of our role as the British government. And let me assure you all, we will continue to support all of you working towards that goal. To be honest and candid, the failure to reach an agreement in Crans Montana last year was a great disappointment, I'm sure, for all. But we should take heart and hope that there was real progress made during the talks. Thanks, and I pay tribute to the remarkable courage and commitment of the leaders, and from the fact that parties came even closer to an agreement than ever before. I also welcome, as the Minister for the United Nations, the UN's recent decision to appoint Jane Hull Loot to lead consultations with the parties on the way forward. I know Jane Holt Lute. I've worked with her on various initiatives at the United Nations, and I believe she'll be a very powerful asset to the discussions which are being held. 
Το λόγο έλαβε και ο πρώτο ελληνοκύπριο βουλευτή Πάμπο Χαραλάμπου, ο οποίο τόνισε τη σημασία τη επίλυση του τραγικού ανθρωπιστικού θέματο των αγνοωμένων. Επίση, ο κ. Χαραλάμπου εξέφρασε την ικανοποίησή του για το γεγονό ότι η Ομοσπονδία έκανε πολύ αισθητή την παρουσία τη μέσω των εκστρατιών ηλεκτρονικού ταχυδρομείου. Α παρακολουθήσουμε την ομιλία του κ. Χαραλάμπου. Well, I've been an MP for a year now, and it was 12 months ago that I was in this room. Uh, we just had the disappointment about the Grand Montana talks, um, and I just want to tell you a bit about what I've been doing since that time. Um, so it, I went to Cyprus in August of last year. Uh, I met some very key people uh, about that, and there was obviously a huge disappointment about the um, the failure of the talks. Uh, but I also met some Turkish Cypriots out there who told me that they were worried, that they had an existential crisis. There's only 100,000 Turkish Cypriots. Uh, in the north, and they're really worried about their future as well. So for them, peace is also very much um, at the forefront of what they're doing, and I think it's something that we should also remember. Um, I, I had the chance to meet with the Committee for the Missing, missing Persons. Um, when I first got elected as a councillor in 1994, uh, I received 1,619 votes exactly. Now, for some people, that will be a figure that uh, you'll remember. That's the exact number of missing people uh, that recorded after the invasion in 1974. And that's why that number is etched in my mind. And that's why we need to do more to try and help find the missing um, bodies who are... Um, we need to get more information to find out where they are. We need to find out where those graves are. And we need to make sure that those remains are reunited with the loved ones so people know exactly what happened with them. Um, I know that the Committee for the Missing Persons are, uh, are looking to the records at Kew to actually try and find any field reports as to where um, there might have been conflict that have been reported that they can actually find out where they are. So that's really, really important that we do that. Um, we've also had the chance to meet with the um, new High Commissioner uh, to Cyprus, uh, Stephen Ifill, who's already started his posting there. He was very kind and generous enough to try and reach out to the community and meet the APPG. So we had a very good discussion with him and told him what we thought the priorities were for Cyprus. And you've heard from the uh, government spokesperson tonight and also from the, um, from the Labour side as to what our, our view is. We need to make sure that um, we keep the pressure up and we keep sort of uh, putting things to the fore, to, uh, put, keeping things to the fore, make sure that the... Um, that the government uh, are aware about the need for Cyprus. I'm sure they are, but we mustn't sort of uh, uh, hide back on that. Uh, I've also been asking questions in the House. Uh, I asked a question about the hydrocarbons, about the Turkish warships in the Mediterranean. Uh, I previously asked the Prime Minister questions about the, um, the Grand Montana talks. Um, and I'm also looking to... Um, there are other issues that I'm dealing with as well. Uh, the issue of torture has come up. Uh, many people, that there's a case that's being brought by uh, some lawyers uh, in the Midlands. Uh, they're representing over 30, um, 30 people who were tortured in the 50s, uh, and that case is against the Ministry of Defence, and that's progressing through the courts. So I'm involved uh, in that case. Uh, I've just seen, bang on time, the High Commissioner has walked in uh, so, welcome, High Commissioner. Um, I've been spending a lot of time with the High Commissioner. I've been attending many events in the community. Um, I'm lucky enough that uh, many of the associations um, from the villages that uh, you represent uh, have many of their functions in my constituency, Venfield Southgate. And the High Commissioner is always present at these events and makes sure that he speaks up for Cyprus and is a true representative for you and keeps the pressure on the, on the government. Um, I've, I, like you, have been fighting for um, a, a peaceful settlement in Cyprus. I've been going on demonstrations since I was uh, seven or eight years old. Uh, my, my dad, who's in the room, would take me on the demonstrations when I was very young. Uh, my, my dad's just uh, sat over there in the back. So... Um, so he was taking me um, straight after when there was the invasion. So it was obviously a, a big issue in my growing up. 
Um, so it's very much uh, at the fore. But also I want to thank uh, people like Christos and the work that the National Federation of Cypriots have been doing. Uh, I've been bombarded with uh, emails about what I'm doing about uh, to help solve the Cyprus uh, calls. Uh, and, um, and it's not just me, but it's many other MPs. Uh, and being a Cypriot MP in Parliament, they, often they come to me and say, oh, we've had this email about Cyprus, what do we do about it? So it's actually been good to actually be able to inform them about the issues in Cyprus. So as I'm there as your representative to help, to help sort of progress the issues and educate people and inform things. Um, I've also been working with, uh, I'm there for all the community as well. So I've been working with the um, Turkish Cypriots that have had their graves and gravestones damaged in a cemetery in Edmonton to try and get justice for them. Um, there's uh, an unscrupulous uh, cemetery owner who's been damaging the graves and uh, we're trying to get sort of justice for them to, so they can actually grieve their loved ones as well. Uh, finally, I, and I was working with the High Commissioner about this, I was able to secure some compensation for some Turkish Cypriots who lost land uh, in Cyprus from the Cyprus government. Uh, and they've been eternally grateful for having done that. Um, so I'm there for all the community to represent you. Um, I will work with you and I will help you as much as I can um, to try and bring about a, a settlement for Cyprus, to keep the pressure on the government. Uh, I'm of the community, I'm from you, and I will represent you as much as I can. So please keep the uh, letters and emails coming, please keep the pressure on, and I'll do the best that I can to represent you to the best of my abilities. Thank you for your support. Ολόκληρε τι ομιλίε από το λόμπι στη Βουλή των Κοινοτήτων θα σα παρουσιάσουμε προσεχώ στην εκπομπή με το φακό του Χελένικ TV.